Hey guys, this is your boy Captain Bruno. So we finally got the Apache 64A, 64D in DCS, and the startup is really simple. But some people are, I'm assuming, are having problems with learning. Uh, Wags posted up a video of Cold Start, and I pretty much do it the same way he does, uh, with a couple little differences that work well for me. So. We're going to go ahead and get into the cold start, how I do it, and I haven't had any problems with uh, with doing it this way, and it works pretty well. So, so we're ready to follow along here. Okay, so the first thing that I've been doing, and same thing that Wags does, is your light panel over here. Go ahead and that bottom, go ahead and click it up. Click that up, formation lights. I'll normally go about half or so. Signal, we'll turn that on. You know, just turn them on. I just turn these two all the way on. And floodlights, I just do about a quarter away. Uh, you really don't need the floodlights during the daytime, but I just do it just for, you know, that's just how I do it. All right, next thing you want to do is battery switch. Right click once, open your APU cover, start your APU. And then I close my window. He'll close his. You'll hear the APU coming up. All right. So now we see APU power on, APU start, and your MFDs will turn on automatically. You don't have to turn them on like you do in uh, like the Hornet and, and all that. So they come right up. Um, so I go immediately hit the TSD button right here. And go to utility. And you see these right here. Um, this is where your INS comes in. So I hit Doppler. Make sure you have Doppler data showed right here. And now your INS is starting to align. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right. Um, then I go and I hit this TSD button right here on the M. And then I go to Fuel. And then I put C Auxiliary. You hit that, you'll see this line pop in. When it turns green, just like that, you're done. All right, so go to flight, set, and you can change your altitude warning. This is where I hear will explain um, if you go, let's say if, I, if you set it for 25 feet, if you get down to 25 feet, you'll get that notification going, you know, you're too low, basically, your load altitude warning. So I go low, and then Go over here you can type it in whatever you want i normally go like 25 50 just whatever you desire and then hit enter and come back and you see it's 25. all right and down here it says unit kilometers so if you wanted in nautical miles just click on it nautical miles or kilometers i stick with nautical miles all right so then i go back to flight uh, by hitting the M button and then engine I hit it twice All right so uh, you can do that way that's how you get to the engine page and then I go ahead and start by right in right click once the one on the left is number one and I do this we do this the same way you get about 15 20 percent okay and then Go idle your left engine like so, and then you'll let it power up. And you can turn off these master lights. I do it every time. That way, you ain't got her yelling in the ear saying, Hey, 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 hey. So, just kind of like let this stabilize, get up where you're going and all that. So you'll see your old PSI going up. And generally what I do, I let all this settle down. Give it a second. All right, looks like it's stabilized. All right, so what I do is then I move into my bore sight. Um, you go ahead and do that. Now you can do this before you even turn on your engine. Uh, I do it either way. Uh, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. So I'll go to weapon. All right, so you hit I 
or if you have it key bound on your keyboard, you know, it brings up your eyepiece. So if I hit I, it's gone. Or hit I again, it's back. But I have it bound, so I can just turn it on whenever. Okay? So now we're going to bore sight. Now, keep this in mind. If you don't turn these on, right here, you will not see the lines in the bore sight. We're going to go click bore sight right here. Then we're going to click high eye heads. Now you see. Now, I was doing it wrong to begin with. I was kind of like lining up my little green circle right here with that yellow dot in the middle. But somebody told me, and it works out better actually, if you take the green lines in the cross and you have the edge of each line touching this outer yellow line, and then we're going to center it up, and then hit our button. Okay. Now, you'll have a bore sight now right here. But also, if you go into your controls, cursor, enter, depress, okay? If you hit that, you don't have to click on the MFD to bore sight now. You just leave it, have your head still, hit this button, and it will bore sight. Um, also, with control bounds, your engine idle. Power level left idle, power level right idle. That's what you'll need to bind or just use the keyboard controls to make your lever right here go forward. All right, so now we've got our bore side up. We're going to go back to our engine page. Go system twice, have this page up and this page. We're going to go ahead and start the right engine. Let it get up to 20, 20, 21, 22, whatever, and then just hit that button. Idle it up, and let it go. Turn this off here. so generally you'll see on this page here on your left MFD um, when these two right here stabilize and everything um, you'll see there's nothing really moving except these numbers so what we're going to look at is over here on the uh, engine oil PSI side now, I'd normally wait for you see engine number two when it gets down about 73 72 I will go ahead and do my power control lever, which I actually have it set on an axis command. Move over. I got a lot of controls like set up right here. Power levers both. This is on an axis command. So I have it on a switch on my verbal throttle, like where it has our flaps, and that's what I use to power up the level. I use that on every one of them. But also, if you look in your regular key binds, Power level. You got your idle buttons there. And I don't ever use this, so it should be somewhere in there. Maybe it doesn't have one. You got your step. It's probably one of these. Um, like I said, I don't never use them. I was just using them to access command. So I do apologize for that. That's a new thing for me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and power this thing up. Turn that off. So let all your numbers stop and stabilize. So we stabilize right here at 17. <laughs> we're at 571. 101 on both. All PSI 70, 71, roughly about the same. 
right, so now what I do is since I have everything stable, I go ahead and turn my APU off. Close the cover. And you'll hear the engine simmer down a little bit. All right, then I will move back into my PSD switch. Go back up to utility. And our INS is still going. So it does take a, a, a few minutes for that to uh, align and everything. A lot of times at this point you can go into your like your navigation and start setting the waypoints and all that stuff. So while we're waiting on that, one thing we can do is we come over here and uncage. And then turn on our countermeasures. This will alert your audio. Your audio is already up, but I have learned to make sure that your audio settings are set like in the helmet and in the cockpit where you can actually hear it. Um, I made the mistake and didn't have the volume turned up enough, so I got shot down by a MIG, and I never heard it. I saw it flashing, but I never heard it. So, all right. So, and I go ahead and just me, my preference is I just put all three switches up. Sometimes, you know, I'd run like that. It just depends on however you want to do it. All right, so now that's set. Now we're just waiting on INS to finish up. You can kind of just play around, look around, all that kind of stuff. You know, center up. Look back. All right, so now you notice that this turned green. It's no longer white. So right now, it's saying our position confidence is 0 0.026 kilometers as it changed as I was talking. Now, the lower the number, the better. But at 0 0.026 of your position, that's pretty close. That's not off at all. So you can get to uh, be pretty close to your position. All right. So now... Go back to my TSD. There it up. And we'll do, uh, I'll do a, another video on navigation and TSD stuff. Right now it's just going to be uh, startup and takeoff. Alright, so now we are practically good to go. Everything is started. Engines look good. And turn your parking brake off. All right, so one thing I have learned for myself, and it works, it just depends on your controls, what you're using, how you fly helicopters and all that, but when you take off in the Apache, if you don't use any rudder foot, that thing will turn right real quick in a hurry. So what I, what I do is I will rotate my rudder to the left just a tad and hit that force trim up switch, okay? That may be too much, actually. We're going to come back just a little bit off somewhere in that position. And then I rotate my stick forward just a tad, like you kind of would in the K50. You know, in the K50, you'd normally go, like, way up a little bit higher. But this one, I just go right above this cross line right here. Just right up where you see that red X. And then I will power up. I get to the line. Start seeing it spin a little bit. We're starting to move forward. And then I just rotate it up a little bit while you're playing with the rudder. Ideal for takeoff, but not one of my best takeoffs. But it'll work. We're in the air. We didn't crash. We didn't blow up. Alrighty. So we're going, and we're good to go. Guys, this is just my way of doing it. Uh, if you have a better way, please comment or anything. Um, if you see where I missed a step or something that can make my startup and everything a little bit better too, you know, please let me know. But for, for now, this is just my way of doing it. Uh, a lot of it is the same process that WAGS used, and it works. Hope it was uh, informative to some of you. Um, you got something out of it if you have any questions you know please feel free to ask appreciate it